These days I'm playing Timber Peak by Flying Frog Productions, a zombie game in the set in the last night on Earth system and universe. This is a standalone expansion. You could combine what you find in this box with other uh, games and expansions in the system, or you could just start from here. This you could start playing the game by just owning this, which is um, what I've what I did, what I'm doing. I played the game in the past, but only with my friends' copies. This is uh, the first. Uh, uh, installment in the series that I decide to purchase and I'm going to play it. Well, actually, I started playing it already. I'm going to play it more and I'm going to review it. But I realized that if I made a video in which I talk about the last night on Earth system in general and then I add the, the new elements that uh, Timber Peak brings to the table, then that video would be too long. I don't like to make my videos. Uh, too long. I know how busy you are. I'm trying to make videos that fit your busy schedule. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to film an overview of the last night on our system using the components in this box here uh, in case you do not know the system yet. So I don't, I don't want to take for granted that you already know the system. So in case you want to know how the system works, uh, today you're going to have that little overview and then in one of the next days I will film a review about Timber Peak specifically and what Timber Peak adds to the last night on Earth system. The game is played by two players or two teams controlling one, a group of four survivors, and those always four survivors, always four, no matter the number of players that are controlling them, and another team or player controls the zombies. And you have two uh, different types of zombies, brown ones and green ones, not because they have different abilities, they're exactly the same, it, just, it is just to differentiate them in case you have two zombie players, then a player controls the brown ones and the other player the green ones, but they work exactly the same. Zombies are represented only by miniatures on the board, heroes are represented by a miniature on the board to indicate the location of the hero, but your heroes also have a profile card with a picture, a little bit of, of background here, starting location, very important abilities, each hero will have unique special abilities or unique combinations of special abilities I should say, and then you have a health track, each time that the hero takes a wound you place a wound marker on one of those spaces, I guess you imagine what happens when a marker is added to the last space on that track. We also have two decks of cards, this is an extremely important element in the game. Zombie cards, which are used, yes you guessed it, by the zombies. The zombies have a hand of four cards, they play these cards at various times, depending on the effect of the card. Some cards need to be played immediately when they are drawn, but many cards can be kept and used when the zombie player or players think that it is the right moment to do so. And the heroes also have cards. These cards must be found. That is, the heroes must spend a search action to draw a card, then they can add to their pool. Cards that the heroes use may be weapons, maybe general items, maybe events that are kept there and then used when the heroes think it is the right time to use them and cards will allow the heroes to survive, which is extremely important, uh, but also in some scenarios cards will be vital to complete the mission. For example, in some scenarios you need to look for specific cards that indicate items that are hidden or lost somewhere on the board, and you need to look for those items, that is, for those cards, to win the scenario as the survivor player. The game is played on a board consisting of a central square tile with nine large spaces on it. These spaces work exactly as the smaller spaces surrounding it. They simply allow characters to move faster from one side of the board to the other. And surrounding that tile you have four L-shaped 
terrain tiles. The game actually comes with more than four, you will not use them all each game. You draw random ones and you place them around the central tile. So actually that adds variety to your map from game to game. There are spawning pits on the map. Those are the areas where you will place the initial zombies and where you will add zombies to the board later. At the beginning of the game, the zombie player rolls dice to determine the initial amount of zombies to place on the board. They need to be placed on spawning areas as evenly as possible. You cannot load a single area with a lot of zombies directing the other ones. And as for the heroes, so they have a starting location printed on their car. For example, uh, Sheriff Anderson starts on, on the road out of town area. Those two characters start in the diner. This character here starts in the tavern. And in case the starting location of your character is not in place in the present game, then your character starts in the middle of the board and as an advantage to make up for the fact that you're starting in the middle of nowhere, that character starts with a hero card in hand already. Each turn is divided in a zombie turn and in a hero turn. During the uh, zombie turn, the first thing that happens is that time passes, the turn marker moves by one space on the turn track, and that is good for the zombie player, usually it is the zombie player that tries to delay the opponent, the zombie player wins if the heroes cannot accomplish their mission by the uh, time that has been allotted to them by the scenario instructions. After that, the zombie player draws new zombie cards to replenish his hand, and that happens automatically, which is very good for the zombie player. The, the heroes don't get cards automatically. Then the zombie player rolls to spawn new zombies. So the zombie player rolls two dice, and if the uh, total that is rolled is higher than the number of zombies in play, that uh, that turn, later in that turn, new zombies will be added to the board. So you know it now, but you do not add the new zombies until later in the turn. And this roll here is a nice self-balancing mechanism. There is a pretty much steady number of zombies that are going to be on the board because of this. Less zombies you have, more chances that new zombies will be there. But at the same time, there is still some unpredictability there. After that roll, zombies move. The zombie player moves his zombies. It doesn't take multiple PhDs to do so. Zombies uh, try to go towards, uh, towards uh, heroes. If a zombie is adjacent to a hero, the zombie must move uh, to reach that hero. A zombie with the hero stays there. Otherwise, zombies simply move by one space, and when they and they can move diagonally too. And when they move, uh, you can make an optional noise such as like uh, or like. Uh. It is entirely optional, but highly recommended this by me. Uh, and yes, zombies move through walls. It is really strange, um, that represents the fact that they move through windows, they have other tricks up their sleeve. Uh, it, is a, it is still very hard for me to accept that thematically, but it works gameplay-wise because it gives the zombies a movement advantage, they are much slower than the heroes, this way still it makes the, their march threatening. But thematically, I don't know, not my favorite part of the game. After the zombies move, if there are zombies in the same space with a hero, a fight will have to be resolved, but I will explain fights later. And then, if new zombies have been spawned this turn, you roll to determine the amount of zombies that need to be added, and those are added to the spawn areas as evenly as possible. After that, you have the hero turn. The hero that takes a turn can first move, you roll a d6, and the hero can move by that amount of spaces, but heroes cannot move through walls, they cannot cut corners where there are doors, they have to move straight through the door, otherwise in open space heroes can move orthogonally or diagonally. 
So a hero can move up to the result of a d6, or the hero can give up his or her move action to search in case the hero is inside the building. And when a hero searches, the hero draws a card from the hero deck. If after movement uh, there are multiple heroes in the same space, those heroes can exchange items. Then the active hero can use range attacks against enemies that are in range and, uh, and, and that the hero has a line of sight to. And to do so you need to have ranged weapons. So the ranger weapon, the card for the ranged weapon you're using pretty much will tell you what you need to know. Um, pretty much the standard attack is you roll one or multiple dice and the card tells you the number to hit, the number that you need to match or exceed in order to score a hit. And then there are other types of effects. Uh, your weapon may be out of ammo, different things may happen depending on the weapon that you're using. After, range, after the range attack of the active hero, the fights with the zombies need to be resolved. So you will have a fight phase during the zombie turn, in case zombies and heroes share the same space, and another fight phase during the hero turn, again, in case zombies and heroes share the same space. How do you resolve a fight? Let's keep things simple. When you resolve a fight, and suppose that there are no modifiers whatsoever, the hero rolls two dice and the zombie one. You roll the dice and you look at the results individually. The player with the single highest result scores a hit against the opponent. In, this, in that case, for example, the hero scores a hit against that zombie. Uh, pretty much, or more or less, because if uh, the zombie scores a hit against the hero, then the hero takes a wound. And if the hero scores a hit, like in this case, actually what that means is that the hero effectively protected him or herself, but does not destroy the zombie. In order to destroy the zombie, you need to roll doubles. And of course, also to exceed the role of the opponent. In that case, for example, that zombie is hit and killed, removed from the board. So as you can see, it is pretty hard to actually destroy a zombie unless you have extra dice or cards or abilities that will improve your chances. Because in this case, it is not all that easy. Another thing that helps the zombies is the fact that they win ties. And these are the core ideas of the game, really. Zombies and heroes alternate taking turns until either the heroes complete the mission that has been assigned to them in the scenario, and in that case they win the game, or until the zombies have killed enough of them to win the game, or in case uh, the time is over, the heroes didn't complete the mission by the last turn in the game, then the zombies win, and there may also be other conditions that uh, can allow the zombie player to win the game.